From Amateur Radio Newsline Report, number 2341, this is Ham Nation Headlines for Wednesday, September 14th, 2022. Our top story comes to us from space. Radio waves have transmitted something remarkable to astronomers here on Earth. Long-awaited imagery from outside our solar system. The James Webb Space Telescope's first direct image of a planet outside of our solar system has been transmitted to scientists offering promise for deeper research into exoplanets. NASA reported that astronomers received the image of the planet in orbit around a star estimated to be 385 light years from Earth. The image was taken with the near-infrared camera and the mid-infrared instrument, which each focus on different portions of the infrared spectrum. There have been only a few dozen direct imaging of exoplanets such as this one. Astronomers have identified over 5,000 exoplanets, but only by an indirect method of observing starlight dimming as the planet passes in front of the star they are observing. NASA expressed hope these new infrared images will be a gateway to deeper study of exoplanets. This is Kent Peterson, KC0, DGY. Construction is to begin in Madrid on a small ham satellite that will be a first for the Romanian teenagers who designed it. AMSAT EA is giving support to a small amateur radio satellite designed by students in Romania. A project considered the first of its kind for Romanian students. Known as the ROM2 mission, the satellite built with the support of the Romanian organization ROMSPACE is to be assembled in Madrid at the AMSAT EA facilities. AMSAT EA, which has registered the satellite internationally, will be responsible for the satellite once it has entered orbit. The satellite's maintenance data will be transmitted via CW. The satellite will fulfill its mission to take photographs with a 2 megapixel camera and transmit them to HAMS, who will be able to retransmit them from their own stations using the SSDV protocol. They will use the frequency of 436.235 MHz. SSDV packets will be transmitted from the satellite using GFSK. The students attend the International Computing High School in Bucharest and are between the ages of 15 and 18. This is Ed Durant, DD5LP. Whoever said that fresh beginnings can't be fun probably didn't belong to this small but growing group of CW enthusiasts. You don't have to live in the state of Connecticut to be a member of the Connecticut CW Club. But yes, it helps if you enjoy sending and receiving Morse code. Members are going to get that chance in a big way this month. The club is having its inaugural CW contest starting on September 17th at 1200 UTC and ending September 18th at the same time. To participate and qualify for a certificate, you need to join the club, and membership is free. Members have already signed up from North Carolina, California, Arkansas, New Hampshire, and yes, Connecticut. Operators who have the three highest scores and the operator who makes the longest distance QSO will receive certificates. According to its website, the club has other goals too, sharing portable operations including soda and poda, having bi-weekly social meetups, and teaching newcomers the ins and outs of CW. The group's meetings are held in person and using Zoom, so members who don't live locally can still attend. See the website ctcw.club for details. This is Randy Sly, W4XJ. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news for four decades and counting at arnewsline.org. With Kent Peterson, KC0DGY, Ed Durant, DD5LP, Randy Sly, W4XJ, Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the news desk in New York, and our news team across the globe, I'm Don Wilbanks, AE5DW. 7-3, we'll see you next time here on Ham Nation.